Hello, welcome back. Welcome to the second episode in this series on arrangement-based listening. As with the first video in this series, I'm not actually gonna be giving you specific answers to the questions I present you with. I would be a bad teacher if I didn't make you critically think at least a tiny bit. Today we're discussing what happens when you put more than one note together. That's right, it is how to listen for the purpose of arranging Harmony Edition. Side note, harmony doesn't have to be pretty. It can be consonant or dissonant. So technically, two people can hate each other's guts and still live in harmony. Gotcha. Let's get to the questions, yeah. Question one, is the song chord-based, riff-based, or both? Think about songs like Enter Sandman, which I've linked to below, as well as all of the other songs that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. If you were to just play the chords of Enter Sandman, you'd pretty much be playing E minor for the majority of the song. That's a song that's built more on the riffs that they're playing. <laughs> Copyright? You can hear it a lot in the melody because he kind of just sings the same note the whole time. An example of a chord-based song is Hello by Adele. Think about it, it starts with those chung, chung, chung. Some songs switch back and forth. Still Into You by Paramore is a great example of this. During the verses, it's playing these riffs that really only outlines an F major 7 chord and then a D minor 7 chord. I'm pretty sure. I have to go back and look at it. However, it then bursts into this harmonically energetic chorus. Again, both great, but if you want to create a piano rendition of Enter Sandman, here's your box. Think outside of it. Question two. Is the harmony mostly consonant or dissonant? If you have a solo singer who is accompanied by three bassoons, you can probably do most pop songs. They're really just made out of triads, which are three note chords. However, if you're arranging jazz, you'll run into chords that have four, five, six, seven, all 11, 12. Oh, notes. <laughs> Not a problem if you're arranging something for piano, except maybe the 12 notes, you only have 10 fingers. However, if you run a barbershop quartet, and you're doing jazz, you might need to make some decisions on what notes people are singing. Oh, hey there, question three. What speed is the harmony changing? The song Home by Philip Phillips is a great example of this. Once again, all the songs are linked down below. Gotta keep them copyrights happy. The song is driving, but the actual harmonic changes occur relatively slowly when you compare them to the intensity, compare them, I'm from Boston, when you compare them to the intensity of the strumming. So if you wanted to flip it on its head, once again, and do a piano ballad, you'll find that you're staying on the same chord for quite a bit of time. You may need to, you know, open up the cabinet, spice it up a bit. Four! Is the melody consonant in relation to the harmony that it's sitting in? In a traditional sense, melodies are often formed by taking the three notes that make up a triad and sort of walking between them. For instance, if you are in a G major chord, the chances are high that your melody is going to include a G, a B, or a D. Now this isn't always the case. This is partially because a recognizable melody can often take priority over the harmony that it's sitting in. So when you're listening to a song, it won't necessarily sound weird because the melody is recognizable, but it's actually not fitting in well. In the chorus of I'm With You by Avril Lavigne, heads up, gonna be a tiny bit of soft language here, she begins the chorus by singing a B over an A major chord on the word damn, and then on cold, the chord changes to a B minor, but she's singing a C sharp. What do I do? Now there is a hierarchy of which notes typically get left out of a chord first so that it still retains its original function. But just understand if you're arranging I'm with you for three clarinets, you're not really gonna be able to keep the original triads, so you're gonna have to compromise a tiny bit. Hello? Is that question five? Will changing the exact notes of the harmony severely alter how easy it is to recognize? Again, not always a bad thing, especially if you want the audience to have that wait a second, this is Tiny Dancer, moment. A great example of this principle is the song Lose Yourself by Eminem. Try it, learn the one finger you have to move to play it on guitar. Start playing it at a party and unless everyone's under 16, I guarantee you they'll start rapping along at the exact right place. And if they fade out for a second, don't worry, they'll come back in on mom's spaghetti, I, I, I promise. However, if you play a D minor chord and then a B flat major chord, which is essentially what that boils down to, even with the exact same rhythm, I bet you people won't know what song you're playing. It's the exact harmony that sets the necessary attitude of that song. Definitely an important question to ask yourself before you start writing parts out. Whew, we made it. This video is a little beefier than the one on melody, but then again, harmony is beefier than melody. 
I'm so hungry. Once again, leave comments below telling me what other questions you ask yourself when you're listening to a song to arrange, and also any solutions you have to the questions that I presented to you today. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. My name is Greg, and as always, I'm super excited to share this musical world with you.